uh, about our own Victor Sime now, where Napoli's manager Antonio Conte has uh, confirmed that um, as at now, Victor Sime will not be reintegrated uh, into Napoli's squad for the ongoing 2024-2025 season. I recall that uh, Osime, uh, of course, uh, a lot of speculation around him. Uh, also, uh, uh, Saudi club Alali and Chelsea, of course, tried pricing him away from Napoli on transfer deadline day. But sadly, uh, those two moves uh, broke down. Uh, either because um, Napoli, we understand, were demanding uh, so much money from uh, Saudi club Halali, of course, or uh, Osime couldn't just agree uh, weekly wages with uh, Chelsea who were willing to take him on loan right there. So at the end of um, uh, Saturday's game between Napoli and Parma, uh, where we saw Romelu Lukaku, the man who has been brought in to replace Osime, uh, scoring one of the goals, uh, Conte told a post-match news conference uh, that uh, sat now. Uh, of course, um, uh, he said he's sorry for Osime actually, uh, that uh, also sorry for the club that sadly the move couldn't uh, just uh, uh, pan through right there and he said for now uh, there's nothing to be done of course that uh, the squad that took on Palmer is the team and he said this is a group and that the decisions have been made of course uh, right there at uh, Napoli so as it stands the Saudi uh, of course uh, transfer window ends today uh, so is either a Saudi club comes for our own or uh, he might just potentially be out of footballing action uh, till January when the transfer window reopens and if a club will be able to reach an agreement with uh, Napoli and also Siemens Camp, of course, reaching an agreement with that particular club. Let's go to Uyo now. Let's have uh, Bright James, uh, your sports editor. Uh, okay, uh, uh, let's move on. Of course, we'll get Bright um, uh, soonest on the program to talk about uh, Siemens. So, a sad one, really. A lot of us thought that um, that uh, transfer deadline then on Friday that we'll be able to have uh, the future for Simmer sorted out, uh, either in going to Chelsea or, of course, uh, even Saudi Arabia, uh, even though some believe that uh, that will not help his career. Uh, but some thought uh, will have uh, taken uh, that offer uh, temporarily, then negotiate with um, the two parties, uh, uh, Alali, of course, and Napoli, that the release clause be lower than what um, was uh, in his current contract, of course, uh, but it wasn't to be. Uh, so potentially for Osime, uh, he might not be able to play football till the January transfer window. Uh, really sad one. Uh, yesterday, Odeon Drew the Gallo, uh, of course, uh, took to social media to share his thoughts. And he said he made a call to Osime, and he said that um, what he had on the phone, Osime, of course, is currently low. Uh, so we can only... Uh, uh, of course, uh, from ADBN Sport, extend our support to our own reigning African Football of the Year, Victor Osime. Uh, hoping that uh, he's going to stay strong. Uh, he's part of the Super Eagle squad uh, for the games against Benin Republic and Rwanda. Now, we don't know if he's going to report to camp in Rio this week. But going by what Osime, uh, what uh, Odeon Igalo said uh, yesterday on social media, uh, the uh, mental state of uh, Osime, of course, is uh, currently low, and uh, it will be tough, really, to have him, of course, um, report to camp this week. But we we'll monitor that particular development for you. Uh, so, uh, for those asking about uh, what next for Osime, as he stands now, is not part of the project at Napoli. Now, uh, before that game against Parma over the weekend, uh, on the CIA website, actually, Napoli listed uh, Lukaku. As the one to don the number nine jersey that Osime uh, normally wears at Napoli. But when the game against Parma took place, we saw Lukaku, of course, with jersey number 11. Uh, and we understand that uh, Napoli later uh, withdrew that uh, initial stand they had of um, handing Osime's jersey to Lukaku. Uh, so perhaps uh, doing that uh, means that um, uh, they are trying to create a room for him, which prompted newsmen to ask Conte at that post-match news conference and he said this is a squad i'm working with currently and that squad includes uh, uh that squad rather doesn't include our own victor Sima. uh but we are hoping that uh, these matters can be resolved uh, uh possibly uh there's a way that it can be brought back into the squad possibly but let's go to you now bright is ready uh good morning uh bright james good to have you on edbn sport uh, this monday morning 
very much, Sam. It's a, it's a fine morning to join you. Yeah, let's talk about uh, Victor Simon. I mean, uh, the reigning African footballer of the year. A year ago, uh, if you tell so many people that uh, Osima is going to uh, potentially uh, not play football for a couple of months, not that he's injured, not that he's under a FIFA ban or a ban by the Italian Football Federation, but as a result of contract issues, in not uh, being able to secure a move away from Napoli, and we understand that uh, uh, the relationship between Osima's camp and Napoli has completely broken down. Uh, what do you make of this situation around Osime? And the question for a lot of people, uh, like uh, is also on this screen, is what next for our star striker? Uh, of course, uh, right there, a man who made it to the top 10 of the Ballon d'Or last year. Um, and I'm um, uh, the Osime saga has degenerated to what we have now, where um, there are lots of uncertainty surrounding with Simmons as a football player, at least for the foreseeable future. And the Saudi Pro League transfer window ends later tonight. And except there's cavalry coming from that angle, I think with Simmons is at now. If the world had to point to anything to go by, who said, and I quote, after that game against Parma, when asked about Simmons at some point to the team, he said, no player will be reintegrated. Those who are out of the project remain out of the project. We made our choices and work in one direction. I want to understand, Osimen is not the only player in that bracket. Mario Rui is also another player who has been frozen out of uh, the first team at uh, Napoli. Now, um, we saw that Oshola, you know, she did a tweet. You know, and that tweet has now been deleted on, on X, formerly known as Twitter. Uh, and, that, and, and I quote again, uh, um, if you hear with your club offer Victor Simen, even you said go swear for them. <laughs> right. <laughs> and that takes Chelsea. me situation. Now we've heard of a fee, um, you know, some speculations, one hundred and twenty thousand pounds a week, some say one hundred and thirty thousand pounds a week. All right. Now when you put that side by side with what the Simen currently earns, reportedly CDR stops Enna about two hundred and thirty thousand pounds every other week. It definitely tells the story of where Chelsea, how Chelsea approached that deal psychologically. They were approaching that deal, you know, not from the standpoint that they need a cement so badly. They were approaching the point of the, the transfer, you know, uh, negotiations from the standpoint of cavalry for cement, knowing the tricky situation back at Napoli. They were very insistent on a loan deal with an obligation to sign. And we understand personal wages was a huge factor yeah. why that deal broke down. As sad as it is, I think... Um, it's a loss at both ends, right? Yes, Romelu Lukaku scored in his debut as Napoli came from a goal down to um, score two, two stoppage time goals. Frank Zambo and Gizan and Romelu Lukaku as well, helping Antonio Conte get the wins you know, in that particular game. But there was a red card for the Palmer as well. And does that squad look entirely good? I think they will need to see him at some point. Yeah. Maybe again, well, speculations here. The decision or the, the, the rescinding of the decision to hand Osimhen's number nine jersey to Mary Lukaku points to possibly a fact that there could be hope, yeah. a glimmer of hope for, for, for Lukaku or for Osimhen at Napoli. Now, let's go back to um, John B. Mikel and his time at Chelsea. I understand a similar situation took place in, 20, in 2016. Same manager, Antonio Conte, John B. Mikel. Now, John B. Mikel, alongside uh, his international teammates at the level at the time, uh, Victor Moses wanted to play at the, at the Olympics in, in 2016. And Antonio Conte told them very categorically, if you go to the Olympics, you've got no place in my team. John Mikel said, according to the interview he, he conducted, said, well, he told Victor Moses, well, you've still got a lot in terms of the future for you, right? I've won plethora of trophies here. You're just building a legacy for yourself. Okay, yeah. Maybe it's best for you to stay back. But for me, I have my, main, my mind made up already. I'm going to the Olympics, and if that means being frozen out of the squad, so be it, right? And he was frozen out of the first team, and that's what led to John B. Mikel leaving. But we know at some point, when results deteriorated, according to John B. Mikel, uh, Antonio Conte called on him, and in fact called him to his office and asked if he's willing to be a part of the first team again. Something John B. Mikel churned out vehemently, said, no, I've made, you made your decision not to put me in the first team, and now you need me. So I made my decision as well, and I've made peace with it. I think it's the end of the road for me at Chelsea. And soon after, he left. So that tells you there could be something for Simen. 
But what I want to see men to do, Sammy, as we wrap up this conversation, is to stay as a professional. We know Simon has got, you know, quite the attitude, you know, when he wants to. Uh, you know, he allows sometimes his emotions get the better of him, right? But I think he should stay as a true professional. He's still got a contract at Napoli. So yeah. he needs to carry himself in the best professional way possible. Attend trainings, if there are team meetings, anything the club wants him to do now, because he's obligated to do that based on his contract, he should do that professionally without grumbling. Now... The worst case scenario is Osimhen doesn't play football, but maybe January he has the option because I'm not sure Napoli would want to keep him on, on their payroll for that long and continue to pay him when he's not playing football. So they want a resolution to what looks now like an impasse very soon. But I think it's a lose-lose situation. Osimhen doesn't play football. He reduces his, his transfer stocks and his stocks in terms of international ratings in football. But Napoli have a player who is their highest earner and in Italian City has highest earners we speak in their payroll who they continue to pay but don't allow him to play. I think that's the impasse. That's the situation we have, Sammy. Yeah, definitely. Uh, of course, uh, um, so two things majorly uh, might happen in the next uh, few months. Uh, either Napoli might uh, just decide to uh, bring him back into the first team squad. Uh, since they decided not to hand that Jesse number nine to Lukaku, uh, again, uh, going against their initial decision, or they might just decide to re uh, reduce the release clause in January and uh, allow Osimo, of course, to uh, sign for a club that uh, is willing to uh, pay him uh, possibly the same amount of money he's earning per week now at uh, Napoli. But we're wishing him all the best. Uh, let's see if, um, uh, of course, he will be in Rio this week. Now,